Yo, what's up, guys? It's uh, Farsa, and let's keep talking. Let's continue our conversation about variables. So, last video, we created this variable, this integer variable, which is a whole number, and we called it REQ damage, and we set it equal to 50. And then we also changed the value, and we set it equal to 100. And that's, you know, that's the point of variables. We can change it around. So now let's do more with this. Let's delete all this. And uh, let's only keep int req damage is equal to 50. So now let's say we want to get the sum of req, w, and e damage and figure out what the damage of a total combo is. So we want to figure out if we can, if re hits us with everything, if we can, if we can survive, right? So let's do that. Let's say int. So now we want to make variables for Ari's W and her E, right? Because we want to define how much damage they do. So let's do int Ari W damage. Let's say her W does 25 damage. And finally her E, int Ari E damage is equal to, let's say it does 40. So now we have these three variables and they each define each of uh, one of Ari's skills and how much damage they do. So how do we find the sum of all these? Well, let's do that. First of all, let's, let's create a print. Uh, let's create another variable. Let's call. Let's create it at the top. We'll call it int total damage. And I'm not going to set this value equal to anything. And the reason is I don't because I don't know what our total damage is right now. Right? I have to add up all these values, and then I can figure out what our total damage is. But I'm going to declare the variable up there. Just because you know that's, that's uh, it's better programming practice to declare your variables first. So once we've declared, also notice that this does not crash our program. We don't have to set a variable equal to something. It's just that if we try to look inside this variable right now, there is nothing inside total damage of importance. It has no value, pretty much. It's just garbage in there. But we can set it equal to something later. So let's do that. Let's say total damage is equal to. So now we want to set total damage, we want to give it a value, and we want to add up all these variables. And it's just as easy as you think. We're just going to do REQ damage plus REW damage plus, let me scroll down a little bit, plus REE damage. And it's exactly that easy. And remember, we have to close it off with a, with a semicolon. Do not forget those semicolons or your program will crash. You know, just for fun, let me just break the program for you. Let's try to run this program, see what happens. It says, on line 20, oh, by the way, if you look on the bottom, when your program crashes and doesn't work, it'll give you a bunch of errors. And it'll tell you what line numbers to look at, which is pretty awesome and convenient for us. So it says on line 20, actually, let me, let me take all this space out. Lots of space here. Let me build it again. All right, it says on line 14, it expects a semicolon before the return. And it's right. Before this return, there should be a semicolon. I'm sorry about that, computer. Don't be mad at me. So yeah, don't make a computer mad. Always put your semicolons there. Don't ever forget them. They're very important. So what have we done here? We have calculated the total damage of Ari's combo. Now let's figure out what her... Uh, let's print it out. Remember, we figured out how to print in the first video, and we figured out how to print what's inside a variable in the second video. If you don't remember, I'll tell you right now. Ari total damage is equal to percent d remember by the way i should have mentioned in the last video this percent d is only for integers for integer variables it goes inside an integer variable and literally pulls out the value so what value do you, what do we want to look at here well we don't want req damage because that's just a q or w or e we don't we don't want those we want the total damage which is right here so we're going to say after that comma we're going to say total damage and that's going to give us and that tells our uh, our print statement that we want to look inside total damage. Close it up with a parenthesis and an SM and a semicolon. Don't forget that, or I'll be very angry. And ignore this underline. It's saying we spelled Ari wrong, but you know, it doesn't know, it doesn't know what we're talking about. So let's go ahead and run this program. And it says Ari's total damage is equal to one hundred and fifteen. A lot of damage, but yeah, it added up all our numbers 50 plus 25 plus 40 is equal to 115. So we're 100% right there. All right, so let's say we want to figure out a number that is not an integer, it's a decimal. Well, this brings us to our second type of variable. 
let me uh write it in where should I write it in? Let's delete let's just write it in up here. Or underneath this. We're gonna declare a new type of variable, and this variable is called a float. A float is a decimal. It's pretty much they pretty much work just like it pretty much works just like an int, except it's a decimal. Of course, you know, if you get there's, there's specifics that you have to worry about, but for now, just know it works like an integer, but it can be, but it's a decimal. So we declare a float the same way we can uh, declare a uh, we declare an integer. We can just say float. Um, let's just say we want to do float. Her uh, let's say what we want to do her r damage. Let's say her r damage was a uh, was a decimal. So we do float re r damage. Ooh, but remember, Ari's R damage can proc three times, right? Since her R can proc three times. Well, so remember that in the future. We're gonna we're, we're gonna look at that. Let's say her R damage is equal to twenty five, and that's just one proc of her R, right? So when she spirit rushes forward once, when she sprints forward once, that one dash, it's gonna give twenty five. Let's, let's let's make it a decimal. Twenty five point five damage. Perfect. So Ari R damage is equal to twenty five point five. So now Ari's total damage is Ari's total damage is going to change, right? Now we also want to add in Ari's R damage, and you know, we do this. We do that. This, we do this uh, like this. So now remember, since we're adding in Ari's R damage, it's going to make our entire value a decimal. So this total damage variable it can't be an int anymore because it's going to have a value that's a decimal. We want that value to be a decimal. So let's let's change uh, total damage to float. Perfect. So now total damage can be a decimal, which is perfect because we want to add in RER damage. And we can add ints and floats together, no problem. It does not matter. So now here we, we can do RER damage. Move down a little bit. Scroll over. RER damage. And we'll close off with a semicolon. But now, very important, remember when I said this percent %d is only for integers? Well, now we're not looking inside an integer value anymore. We're looking inside a float value. So in order to look inside a float, we do percent %f. And let me just check that. Let me make sure I'm not wrong. And yeah, 100 percent right. Percent %f is how we look inside a float variable. So let's just say, for example, we did a percent %d. This will not work correctly. Let me show you why. It completely messes up our value, right? It says re damage is equal to zero, which is not true. We want to look inside the uh, the float variable, which is total damage. Remember, we changed total damage up here to a float because we wanted to hold a decimal value. Well, now we're just looking inside total damage using percent %f instead of percent %d. And percent %f, like I said, it just looks inside the float value instead of the integer value. Percent %d for integers to look inside an integer variable. Percent %f to look inside a float variable. So let me check how much time I have left. All right, I got a few, I got a minute or two. Let me tell you one more thing here. So remember, R is R. It has three procs, right? You can use it three times. Well, that means we want to multiply this number by three. So you know, we're, let's. We could do this, right? We could do. We could do this. And you know that adds it three times, right? But man, that just looks so bad, and it looks too newbie, right? Let's let's be a little cooler. Let's. This is how you multiply in uh in C. It's the star. So now 25.5 star 3. This will multiply our value by 3. So now RER damage will be 25.5 times 3. And you know over here the value will change as well. RER damage will be 25.5 times 3 plus all these values. Let's see what we get here. And that is 100% right. Yeah. 50 plus 25 plus 40 plus 25.5 times 3 will equal 191.5. And that is how you multiply. And on your own time now, I want you to figure out how to use the division uh, the division sign. So division is done, you know, just like this. 25.5 slash 3. So figure, figure out more about that uh, on your own. And, you know, do stuff like, I figure out, you know, if you do an integer divided by an integer, what happens? If you do a float divided by a float, what happens? So I expect you to do that on your own time. You better do it. And I'm, I'm going to talk about more, in the, more about that in the next video as well, so don't worry too much. But yeah, hope you guys like this video, and I'll see you in the next one.